Hey, this is DK. We're going to do something different today. Somehow I ended up with SDX and HG version of Unicorn Gundam, both in destroy mode. Starting with the baby one, SDX one, I will be building this straight up factory build. No painting, no scribing, just nothing, straight up. Thing I do want to point out is that SDX box art has more panel line than the HG one. I have no clue why they did that. SDX has entry grade style of a runner and gate, where you don't need any tools to move them out from the runner. Just a few twists and push and you're good to go. I'm making a bare build first to check how naked this looks because the SDX tends to have a lot of detail with decals. Look how naked this is. It will look much better with all these decals. I think this SD had a lot of decals. It must be due to all the red breaking part. I'll mention something around this when I do the HG unit. But yeah, this is a lot of stickers than usual. This SD only had like three red parts, the chest and the arm pieces. Rest of them, it was all stickers. But don't they look pretty good here? I was surprised. It looks pretty good. Come on, this is straight out of box, right? Now on to HG Unicorn. I'll be making this with full custom paint, except the red clear parts. I was actually thinking about painting those fluorescent pink, but I think clear red looks cool as is, so I'm not gonna touch them. I think this kit has a lot of part compared to other HG kits. I think it's because of all the red cracks that Unicorn makes during the destroy mode transition. Lots of little pieces, lots of little red pieces, lots of little white pieces to put them all together into a one Gundam. It also had many places like arm and joints where Bandai kind of forcefully added the clear red pieces to give that cracked look. It looks really cool when it's built and doing nothing, but I think that makes this Gundam a little fragile than other Gundams, other HG Gundams. If you are here for the first time and asking why is this guy cutting everything at once without any order, I'm doing this to make my process easier when I paint, so I'm just cutting out everything. Now I'm kinda used to matching pieces without the part number from manual. And again, since I'm using water-based primer, I need to sand every piece so it sticks better. If not, they tend to slide off from the plastic. Until this point, I tried to film everything and try to show everything in video. But I think it's kind of getting redundant after so many videos on my channel. So I'm thinking about a new format where I will introduce a box and a runners but skip the basic building process. Like basic cutting, sanding, basic detailing processes and just show extra stuff that I'm doing to the model. Like extra painting, extra detail, extra scribing, something that doesn't come with the box. It might spice things up, I don't know. Maybe I'll try it on the next video and see how they flow. So don't forget to subscribe and like, and share, I don't know. Cleaning dust is very important part of painting because little dust will scrape your paints right off of the plastic. Just some water and little soap and shake them up, pretending this swirling motion is uh, ultrasonic at work. I was able to finally buy the ultrasonic cleaner for like 8 bucks on an AliExpress. Not sure when it will be here, but it will be here one day. So all these steps will not be here anymore. 
since I'm doing this all manually. I have lost some pieces before, like I lost a face mask so I could steal different Gundam's mask and yeah, I just had some trouble doing cleaning at the sink. You can just pat them dry or leave it to dry but I tend to leave it on a microfiber cleaning cloth and let it be. I put some fan on the side to speed up the drying process. I made this line top to bottom with those files just to separate between the runner AB versus CD. Since C and D and A had all white pieces, I was scared that I might not be able to find the correct pieces when I try to assemble them. But during this priming phase, I separate all the pieces per color. So I divided up the white one versus the navy blue one versus the metal parts, which is gray. My plan is to paint all the white into pearl white, so I'm priming them all white. The blue, I'm priming them with gray, so it looks better when I do a dark color, dark metal color. All the gray parts, the metal parts, I'm priming them black, since the metallic paints work nicely with black primers. So I used this pro white paint a few times before, but I kind of failed because I didn't prime them right. But this time it's working out very nicely. It's working well. Paint slowly, thin layers over thin layers. Here I'm mixing up the blue metal with some silver to make it lighter. Because some of the metal pieces have like a blue tint to it. It worked out pretty nicely too. See the difference between blue blue and a tinted blue? Since some of the black primed pieces came out pretty nice, I'm just lightly going over them with silver metallic paints. On some pieces I went all in, on some pieces I just lightly sprayed on top, keeping some black surfaces. I'm definitely gonna try the reverse wash method one day, but that's for later. This one, I'm just trying to paint the eye green with Gundam marker, but it wasn't working, so I had to sand lightly so the paint sticks. It worked out pretty nicely, but the problem was the roundy eye, where the black part has to go in. The Tamiya XN black panel line was working on the edges where the gravity pulls, but Towards the middle, it wasn't, so I'm getting a black paint and just painting on top of it. You know, like the regular Gundam will have one chest piece and maybe like a two yellow chest nipple part to just poke it in, but this one actually has separate pieces because of all those red cracks. It doesn't happen just on the chest, it happens on the forearm, it happens on the foot, it happens in the ankle. So it's really cool. Again, I said this before, but I think this Gundam is a little loose than the other Gundams. If you know me, I love panel lining, but I didn't do any panel line for this Gundam because on the manual, on the box art, this HG Unicorn Gundam had no panel line whatsoever. So I guess I'm making this unicorn how Bandai wants it to be built. Maybe it was just a mistake on their side, but whatever. It looks good. I do think the clear red breaks up. The crack part makes up a lot for it. Even this small waist part gets like one silver, one red part between the chest and the waist. There you go, HG Unicorn. The 
pearl white turned out really nicely in real life, but I'm not sure if you can see the pearls in the video. I try to play with some writings here and there to force the pearlness out of it. Hope they help. Hope you can see it. I think this HG kit is a great kit, but it may be a little tough for first timers due to all the little connecting pieces, but I think it's definitely worth it. This pearl white looks really good. I hope you can see it. This SDX is surprisingly good looking. I didn't do anything to this. I just added the sticker that came with the kit. I'll admit, I painted the Unicorn HG's V-Fin wrong. I should have only painted the front side because it opens from white unicorn horn to a flat V-Fin like that. I spent about 15 minutes plus or minus 5 minutes on that SDX. I just checked the time code but I spent about 10 hours on the HG. Don't get me wrong, you can definitely tell the difference in quality in real person. Real painting versus sticker, white bare plastic versus pearl white metallic white, huge difference. But in this video, the quality, they don't look much different. It's kind of making me sad. Oh well, I am getting better with this spray painting, for sure. Watching and see you on the next build. See ya.